All right. Here is this guy, and I want us to talk about what is the what is the area for this figure. Now, the way I have this drawn, it should be pretty easy to see how I want you to divide this up, right? Do you see your two shapes here? If you were to cut right here, what are your two shapes? You have a rectangle and a parallelogram. Now, what you might want to do, and I'm always telling this to, to my students, is if you can maybe rewrite these and split them up and look at them a piece at a time. So if I take this guy right here, and I kind of just loosely, just very quickly redraw this. Here is a rectangle. And what are the dimensions? How tall is this rectangle? It's 10. Now, I didn't give you any units, did I? So I'm going to show you how we write something if no units are given. What's the base of this rectangle? 7. All right, so that means that the area is what? Base times height, length times width, 10 times 7, right? So you end up with 70. Now, I didn't tell you if it was centimeters, inches, feet, miles, anything, did I? So you will actually write the word units. And that units word means whatever the units it happens to be. If it was, if it was centimeters and centimeters, it'd be square centimeters. So we would write square units. Okay. Remember, unit is just the generic word for whatever the measurement happens to be. That's all. Now for this other guy, this one's kind of drawn a little weird, isn't it? It's not the way we normally draw our parallelograms. Now, if you could imagine rotating it like this, maybe it's easier for you to see your height right here. And you can see your base like that. Sometimes you have to rotate things to get a better grasp on what it is that you're working with. Don't be afraid to do that. Now, what's the base of this? How would you figure that out? Here, let's rotate it back. Looking at this diagram, I need to know what is this base right here? What's this gap? Right, this whole distance from here to here is 10, right? So if that's 5, then the rest of this has to be 5. So then you've got 5 and 5, so that makes it what? 10. Well, the base of the parallelogram only goes from here to here. So I know here, this guy is 15. What's your height? From here to here is 16. I don't want that whole thing. I only want from here to here. What's that? It's what? It should be eight. Eight is eight. Je pense que non. No, it's eight. No. If the whole thing is 16, I'm not sure. Yes, if the whole thing is 16, but this is 7, right? Yeah. So what's 16 minus 7? Oh. Mm. That leaves you with a remainder of 9, right? So your height is 9. So when I talk about the area for the parallelogram, its area is 15. Not 15. Why did I write? Who wrote? Fi Someone told me 15. <laughs> See, now, now it's. You no, someone told me, someone wrote 15, it wasn't me. Some, no, someone said 15, I didn't say 15, you said 15. He said 8. It's his fault. Yeah, he also said 8 too, so I can't. I'm sorry about that, the base is 10, right? We said 10, we said 10, we agreed on 10. I wrote something different, you didn't say anything, and now this is being recorded, people think, oh, Mathematics 1024 is an idiot, he doesn't know how to do anything. 
I guess I just lost some subscribers. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not that I'm keeping track of it, but shout out to all of you out there. All right, so that should be 10 times nine, right? Don't make me look like a fool. I'm just gonna stop this whole YouTube thing. I get 90 square units from that guy, do you all agree? So, when I combine these, what do I get? So the total area equals 100 60 units. square units, like that. Do you all agree? And of course, you can do this with your, with your paper, or I guess with, with your book. It's okay to cut. I mean, to, to cut these, the diagrams out. So I'm going to I want you guys to see that you can add all this stuff together and you can rearrange these shapes. See? There's my rectangle. See right here. So there's my rectangle. And then my... Man, I have I a lot of practice cutting when you have kids that are in elementary school. Here, just let me do this for you. I'm just, I'm just kidding. They do it all on their own. I'm actually mean. Now, look at this. So here are the two shapes I was trying to add together, right? If you were to rearrange this, look at this. You can see that we said before they both have a base of 10. And you can see how they match up exactly having a base of 10. Because the guy was shifted a little bit. And we were talking about how we find the area for a parallelogram. So this was the shape that I had, but I can take this triangle, move it down to here, and you see, for this guy, it's all just one really big rectangle, right? It's seven and nine, so the base here is 16. What's the height? 10, what's 16 times 10? 160 square units. So everything still matches up. We didn't change anything. And you see here that if you were to go through and count up all of these little squares that make up this picture, you're going to have 160 of them. But are you actually going to go and count them yourself? No. That's why we have math. The algebra allows us to handle large numbers easily. Hooray math! 